Now let's take a look at the bigger picture. Ryan Payne is with us, president of Payne Capital Management. He's quoting songs to us, right? You, you started to bring up Bob Marley. What, what's going on here? What makes you think of the market more than Bob Marley? Yeah, tell <laughs> us, explain. Well, I put the quote, don't let them fool you from the yeah. song, uh, you know, would there be love? I can't remember exactly right. the, don't the song. Don't let them fool you. Yeah, we know yeah. the song. Okay, so right, why don't right. let them fool you? What goes with that? Well, we had a lot of the strategists on Wall Street uh, come out in the Barron's uh, list this week. That had 10 strategists. It's their average prediction for next year for the S&P 500. It was up a measly 4 or 5%. And if you remember, most strategists were very muted on the market this year, and right. the markets just had this magnificent run. So my, I suspect this upcoming year, we could see more big moves on the upside in the market, and these strategists, again, with their more muted view, is probably going to be incorrect. Yeah, and pretty soon we'll get to completely erase that sell-off that we saw in December, and our one-year numbers will really be great because they won't even include that big sell-off, right? right? We'll see, or we'll have a different one-year chart, no doubt. Out. Um, and the optimism is there for 2020, but the question is how much growth will we see? Well, right? uh, yeah. Earnings growth, for you, example. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. So I think it's going to be more about earnings growth. I mean, this year earnings were pretty much going to be flat when we look at it. Uh, but what you saw is the multiple on the market got so uh, you know, got so cheap at the beginning of the year, and you talk about December last year, your yeah. Ford earnings were like Terrible. 15 times Ford earnings, which is just dirt cheap. So really, we saw this year markets really just recovering. So next year, you know, you see growth rates up again on profits, and I think profits are going to be the real driver of the market in 2020. So you're not worried about the global picture? What, I mean, what are you thinking about when you talk about the, the global picture, manufacturing? These are some of the things that people are worried about. Yeah, that's all you've heard all year, but I think we're starting to see a trough in all those things. In fact, right. the numbers start to pick up globally last month, according so to So some JP bottoming Morgan. maybe, right? Yeah, exactly. So you know, you're already seeing the foreign market start to move. I mean, they're back to their four-year you know, four all-time highs. So you're starting to see some momentum in the emerging markets, even the frontier markets, which are kind of your emerging emerging markets and even developed markets like Europe with Brexit now looking like we might get a an easier or a light Brexit. So all these things are looking really, really good. And I saw when you were talking about Treasury yields, for example, you see those on the rise. You're saying get in now. I mean, yeah, don't, you know, don't let them fool you. Uh, so go back full circle with my Bob Marley quote. So yeah, I think right now the thing you don't want to do is think the market's up. It's up to an all time high. It's not the time to get in. The reality of it is there's probably more upside here, and I talk about this all the time, but yeah. investors have gotten out of the market all year. You have been an eternal bull. Is it tiresome to be so bullish all the time? I mean, it's hard to be so right all the time. You know, I wish <laughs> for once I could come on the show and be wrong, Nicole, but it's so hard to be this But good. people are making money. I mean, that's the idea, right? So what's the investment strategy? What are your stock strategies for 2020 based on the idea that we're going to see even more than 4 or 5%? Yeah, so I think the S&P probably is one of the more higher valuations if you look at it globally. So we talk about the foreign markets, which I always come on and tell you how much I love them, and I've been right. right. So I think you, know, you still want to make sure that you're diversified globally. And if you look at value stocks versus growth stocks, things like financials, which you just mentioned, are up today. All those things are relatively cheap compared to growth stocks, which I would argue are actually overvalued here. So you want to make sure you're spreading that money, excuse me, you're spreading so you that money around. you said financials and international. Those were two things that you liked, right? Absolutely, right. Okay. So give us the list, international, some ex exposure, some financials. Is there another sector that you like? I like energy as well. I mean, we're starting to see West Tex Texas crude is now above 60 again. Yes. Um, you're getting some really nice dividends. And even globally, if you're looking at things like Royal Dutch, um, you know, Exxon, more domestically speaking, but these are all companies with great dividends. Oil prices could go higher here. Demand for oil is going to keep going up. So I suspect that's another good place to be starting to allocate some of that cash. Right. Everybody loves the dividend stocks, no doubt. So when you talk about value versus growth, um, where do you stand for that? I mean, value is so much cheaper, right? So right. you don't want to make the mistake of, I'm going to get back in the market and put all your money into growth stocks. I mean, don't chase. Don't chase right? returns, right. Have some exposure there because markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent, but make sure that you're getting the value in your portfolio, getting those international you know, markets in your portfolio. And the well. Fed, you still think the Fed is on our side, huh? I mean, it's an election year. I don't think Jay Powell is going to rock the boat and start to raise interest rates, even if we see growth rates for the economy come in better, which I think could be expected. You know, that could happen as well because mm -hmm. the numbers keep coming in better than expected. And I think that'll continue. Even today, President Trump was looking for the Fed to lower rates.
<laughs> Put it out there once again. The administration likes the rates as low as possible, I guess. I mean, he's, he's the king of debt. to hear that, that tweet that he's asking for lower rates once again? I mean, the king of debt likes to use leverage. No, I'm not surprised, but I think Jay Powell is probably at his floor in lowering interest rates. The right. question now is, is he going to keep rates where they are? I think he will, at least through the election. Alan Greenspan said he's told his uh, former colleagues to just just, you know, stay the course. Don't listen to any in interjections or advice. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ryan Payne. Great to see you. President of Payne Capital Management.